Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to cover one of the most widely used indicator that traders use for technical analysis and for trading. It is none other than the Fibonacci tool. Now you may have heard of Fibonacci even from your school days and in many other fields other than trading. This is because it has many interesting properties and has a variety of applications in different fields like mathematics and science. It is really an interesting topic of discussion. But what is more interesting is its role when it comes to financial markets. Fibonacci is a powerful tool that can forecast future price movements and it can give you potential levels where you could take your entries or exits. So this is going to be a complete course on the Fibonacci tool. And as always, I will start from the very basics of Fibonacci. Then I will discuss the important Fibonacci numbers and how they are calculated followed by the importance of Fibonacci ratios and the golden ratio and then we will understand why does the Fibonacci concept work while trading in the financial markets. Then I will talk about the most important Fibonacci tools that traders must be aware of starting from the Fibonacci retracement, Fibonacci extension and Fibonacci expansion and not to mention we will go in depth into how to use these Fibonacci tools for trading. So make sure you watch the video till the end without skipping so as to get the complete understanding of the entire concept. Please do like and share the video for the time and effort put into creating quality content. And if you are new to our channel, make sure to subscribe and also enable the bell notification so that you won't miss out on any upcoming videos. So fasten your seat belts because this is going to be a fun ride. Let's start from the grassroots level. What is a Fibonacci sequence and where did it originate? Leonardo Pisano Bogolo, an Italian mathematician from Pisa, is credited with the discovery of Fibonacci sequence way back in 1002. The Fibonacci sequence that you can see on the screen goes like 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, 55, 89, 144, 233 and the sequence goes on. Okay, let me make it clear that I will not dwell deep into the mathematical properties behind the Fibonacci sequence but I will give you the basics that will provide you with necessary background of the sequence. Now how to make sense out of all this? How are the numbers in the sequence formed? Now it's very easy. Now each number in the sequence is formed by adding the two consecutive numbers before it. So if you add 5 and 8, you will get 13 which is the next number in the Fibonacci sequence. And if you add 34 and 55, you get 89 and the sequence goes on to infinity. But these numbers don't really mean anything for a trader because the numbers that you see on a Fibonacci trading tool aren't actually the Fibonacci sequence themselves. As you can see, the Fibonacci tool in your charts consists of numbers like 0 0.236, 0 0.382, 0 0.618, 0 0.786, etc. So what exactly are these? The simple answer is that the numbers used in the Fibonacci trading tools are actually Fibonacci ratios and not really Fibonacci sequences itself. Now what do I mean by Fibonacci ratios? So if you divide a number on the Fibonacci sequence by any of the succeeding numbers then we will get the Fibonacci ratios. So if you divide two consecutive numbers on the sequence then we will get the first ratio which is 0.618. For example if you divide 21 by the next number which is 34 then you will get 0.618 or 61.8 when converted to percentage by just simply multiplying the ratio by 100. And if you divide two Fibonacci numbers with a gap between them on the sequence then you will get the second ratio which is 0.382. An example would be when 21 is divided by 55 you will get 0.382 or 38.2 percentage. In a similar manner, if you divide any Fibonacci number by its preceding number, then we will get the ratio as 1.618. For example, if you divide 55 by 34, you will get 1.618 or 161.8 percentage. This ratio is very popular and it is called as the golden ratio. Now, this ratio appears many times in geometry, art, architecture, nature, etc. The ratio is simply the inverse of 0.618 ratio. Okay, now that is the basic idea behind Fibonacci ratios and Fibonacci numbers. Now the question is how to use them to our advantage while trading. 
First of all, let me make it clear that there are many kinds of Fibonacci tools like Fibonacci retracements, Fibonacci channels, Fibonacci time zones, Fibonacci circles, Fibonacci spirals, Fibonacci wedges and the list goes on. Which of these Fibonacci tools matters the most? And more importantly, how do you use these Fibonacci tools for trading so that you can get the best possible results? Now, despite a whole spectrum of Fibonacci tools out there, the most widely used ones are Fibonacci retracement, Fibonacci extension, and Fibonacci expansion. And to be honest, it is all you need. But before introducing each one of them in detail, let me tell you the reason why Fibonacci levels work in the real market conditions. It could be due to either of the two reasons. It may be due to the core mathematical principles supporting the Fibonacci numbers and their relation to natural geometrical structures found throughout the nature that makes them work in the financial market. Or you could just argue that it is simply due to the crowd mentality of people in the markets. And the fact that so many traders watch these levels day in and day out and they trade them. So we can anticipate the price to behave in a particular manner near these levels. So if you ask me which one of them is true, well, I would say probably a bit of both. But the important point is that we don't really need to know for certain as to why it works. Moving on, let me now explain what Fibonacci retracements, Fibonacci extensions and Fibonacci expansions are and also show you how to apply them in your charts. Let's start with Fibonacci retracements. Now the textbook definition of Fibonacci retracement goes like this. Fibonacci retracement levels work on the theory that after a big price move in one direction, the price will retrace or return part way back to a previous price level before resuming in the original direction. Now if you think about it for a while, you will understand what it means. It is simply taking into consideration the swing nature or the wave nature of prices. That is prices just don't go up and down all at once, but instead it moves in the form of swings or waves where there will be an impulse move followed by a corrective move. The impulse move is where the momentum happens or it is the strong price move which happens with strong candles and it happens rather quickly while the corrective or retracement move is the price move which is against the ongoing momentum and it may be due to short term profit booking by traders and is usually associated with weaker candles. So one of the purposes of Fibonacci retracement levels is to predict when the pullback or retracement or the correction will end so that you can hope into an existing trend once again. Some traders even anticipate a trend reversal if the price manages to break certain retracement levels like 38.2 or 61.8 levels. So in short, traders use Fibonacci retracement levels as potential supports and resistance areas. Now I will talk about all these in a little while, but first let us learn how to plot Fibonacci retracement levels on our chart and let's look at the important things to keep in mind while plotting these levels. See, Fibonacci retracement levels are actually horizontal lines that indicate possible support and resistance levels where the price could potentially reverse direction. Now the first thing you should know about Fibonacci tool is that it works best when the market is trending. So the simple idea is to go along or buy on the retracement at any of the Fibonacci support levels when the market is uptrending. Or the idea is to go short or sell on a retracement at a Fibonacci resistance level when the market is trending down. So in short, we can think of Fibonacci retracement levels as a predictive technical indicator since we are attempting to identify where the price might be in the future. Now, in order to find these Fibonacci retracement levels, you have to identify the existing trend in the market, be it an uptrend or a downtrend. And then you have to find the most recent significant swing highs and swing lows. Now, if you don't have any idea about price swings and trends, then you can watch my video on market trends or you can even watch the entire price action course for much more clarity. Now, once you have identified the trend and the most recent swing levels, you can use the Fibonacci retracement tool to draw the required levels. For example, if the market is in a downtrend and you have identified the swing high and swing low, now you can go to the left side panel to access the Fibonacci retracement tool if you are using TradingView. Just select the Fibonacci retracement tool 
and then click on the most recent swing high that we have identified and then simply drag the cursor to the most recent swing low and click once again and we are all done. The levels will be automatically plotted. Now why do we have to select the swing high first and then swing low for a downtrend? The reason is quite simple. It is because in a downtrend, the 100% swing move is measured from the recent swing high to the recent swing low. And if we draw the Fibonacci tool from the swing low to the swing high, then the retracement levels will get inverted, meaning that 0%, 23.6%, etc. will be marked near the swing high and 78.6%, 100% levels will be marked near the swing low. And so, a small upward retracement will now show a 78.6% retracement, which is not really true because it is actually just a 23.6% retracement. So, it is important that you follow the correct way of drawing Fibonacci levels. That is, you always start from the origin of the impulse move. That is, for an uptrend, the origin is the swing low. And for a downtrend, the origin of the impulse move is the swing high level. Now, for uptrend, you have to do the exact opposite. So, first of all, you have to find the most recent swing low and swing high. And once you have done that, you have to select the Fibonacci tool from the left side panel. Then you have to select the origin of the impulse move. That is, click on the swing low, not the swing high, but click on the most recent swing low and then drag the cursor to the most recent swing high and click once again and we are done. The levels will be plotted automatically. Now you can always go to the settings to adjust the parameters, colors, appearances and all that. You can also change the levels in terms of do we want it in decimal values or percentages. I personally like to keep it in percentages. So do check it out if you want to add or delete some levels. These settings would be particularly useful when dealing with harmonic patterns where some specific levels are required for certain patterns. And maybe we'll discuss this in one of our future videos. Now based on the depth of the levels, we can consider a 23.6% retracement to be relatively shallow. Such retracements would be appropriate for uh, flag patterns or short pullbacks. Now, short pullbacks usually happen in strong trends where the corrective moves are very limited compared to impulse move. Now, retracements in the 38.2% to 50% range would be considered moderate, which is appropriate for pen and chart patterns. Even deeper, the 61.8% retracement can be referred to as the golden retracement as it is based on the golden ratio. In those scenarios, you will find deep pullbacks and deep pullbacks usually happen with weak trends where the corrective moves are more visible, similar to the ones that we find in the channel patterns. Now, let's take a look at some examples on chart as to how to apply the Fibonacci retracement levels and how price responds to these levels. As you can see, the price is trending up. So we will plot the Fibonacci retracement levels by first clicking on the origin, that is the swing low, and then dragging the cursor to the swing high. The charting software will automatically calculate and show you the Fibonacci retracement levels. Now this is the daily time frame chart of Reliance Industries. And as you can see from the chart, the Fibonacci retracement levels are plotted and it includes 23.6%, 38.2%, 50%, 61.8%, etc. Now, you might find something odd here. Yes, the 50% ratio is not officially a Fibonacci ratio, but it was somehow able to sneak into the group and has never left. Jokes apart, to be precise, this number or percentage stems from Doe Theory's assertion that the averages often retrace half their price move. I won't go into greater detail on this. Maybe I will talk about this when we take up Doe's theory for the discussion. Anyways, it is very useful to indicate the 50% of the price move and usually the price respect it. So it is a good practice to keep the 50% level as it is. Now the expectation is that if the price retraces from the recent swing high, it will find support at one of these Fibonacci retracement levels because traders will be placing buy orders at these levels as the price pulls back. Now let's look at what happened after the swing high occurred. Price pullback right through the 23.6% level and continued to stay over there for a few days. Then finally, the market resumed its upward move 
and eventually broke through the swing high. Clearly, buying at the 23.6% Fibonacci retracement level would have been a profitable long-term trade. Now, let's take a look at another example, but this time for a downtrend scenario. Here, the price is trending down, so we will plot the Fibonacci retracement levels by clicking on the swing high first and then dragging the cursor to the swing low. The software will automatically plot the retracement levels. Now, this is the daily time frame chart of Tech Mahindra. Now, the expectation of a downtrend is that if the price retraces from this low, it could possibly encounter resistance at one of these Fibonacci levels because traders who want to enter and play the downtrend at better prices are anticipating a pullback and may be ready with sell orders at these levels. The market did try to rally, but it starred below the 23.6 level for a bit and then came back to test the 38.2 percentage level. Now, look what happened afterwards. The price continued the downward rally once it took the resistance at 38.2 percentage level, where there could have been a good selling pressure. Now, in these two examples, we observe that the price found some temporary support or resistance at Fibonacci retracement levels. So, if enough market participants believe that a retracement will occur near a Fibonacci retracement level and they wait to open a position when the price reaches the level, then all those pending orders could impact the market price. But one thing you should understand is that prices won't always bounce from these levels. There are actually occasions when the price will just break through these levels and move in the opposite direction. Therefore, these levels should be looked at as potential areas of interest or potential areas of values and nothing more. Now, we have discussed in our price action course that supports and resistances eventually break. Well, from that perspective, Fibonacci levels are also potential supports and resistance levels. Therefore, this logic applies to Fibonacci levels also. This means that Fibonacci retracements do not always work. They are not foolproof and they are not 100% reliable. Now, let's look at another example to prove this point. This is the daily chart of TCS. As you can see, the stock is trending down and we have identified the swing lows and swing highs. Now, I will plot the Fibonacci levels. You can see that the price retraced to 23.6% level and then stalled at the 50% level for a couple of candles. At this point, many traders would think that the 50% Fibonacci level is holding and it is time to short its futures or options or whatever. But take a look at what happens next. It turns out that the swing low was the bottom of the downtrend and the price began to rally above the swing high point. So what's the lesson here? While Fibonacci retracement levels give you a higher probability of success, like other technical tools, they don't always work. You can't actually predict for sure if the price will reverse from a level before resuming the trend. Sometimes it may hit 38.2% or 50% or even 61.8% levels before turning around. But there are also times when the price will just ignore all these Fibonacci levels and blow past all the levels just like it does not even exist. So always keep this in mind and be cautious. Now, another problem in using Fibonacci retracement tool is determining which swing lows and swing highs to use. Now, the problem mainly arises due to the fact that people like you and me look charts differently. We look at different time frames and have our own fundamental biases and beliefs. But the bottom line is that there is no absolute right way to do it, especially when the trend on the chart is not so clear. Sometimes it all becomes a guessing game. But one thing that I like to follow is to find the most recent swing high and swing low level, including the candle swing. That way, I can accommodate the entire price swing within these levels. But at the end of the day, it all comes down to how you like to use it. Now that we know how to draw the Fibonacci retracement levels and how to use it, let us learn a few methods as to how to combine Fibonacci with other indicators or tools to improve our odds in the market. In that context, we will talk about how to use Fibonacci retracements with supports and resistance levels in the market, how to use Fibonacci retracement with trend lines, how to use Fibonacci retracement with candlestick patterns, and how to use Fibonacci retracement with chart patterns. Let's start with how to use Fibonacci retracement with support and resistance levels in the chart. I am of the belief that even though the Fibonacci retracement tool is extremely useful, 
it shouldn't be used all by itself. This is true for any kind of indicator or analysis that you conduct in the market. You always need confluence. You always need more confirmations. And so, the Fibonacci retracement tool should be used in combination with other tools. And one of the best ways to use Fibonacci retracement tool is to spot potential supports and resistance levels and see if they line up with Fibonacci retracement levels. If Fibonacci levels are already support and resistance levels and you combine them with other price areas that a lot of other traders are watching, then the chances of the price bouncing from those areas are much higher. Let's look at an example of how you can combine support and resistance levels with Fibonacci levels. So as you can see, the stock has been on an uptrend. You can use the Fibonacci tool to mark up the levels. Now if you observe closely, you'll notice that there is a strong level or maybe I should say a range which acted as a resistance before. But now, since the price has broken out, it will act as a support level which is simply the concept of change in polarity. And to our advantage, this resistance turned support level coincide with the 61.8% Fibonacci retracement level. So if I were to take a long position, I would wait for the price to retrace or pull back to this particular level of 61.8 which is a confluence zone or a nested zone where the probability of a trade working out in your favor increases. And as you can see, the price did return back to test this level and went back up by giving us a decent return. You can do similar setups on downtrend as well. The point is, you should look for price levels that seem to have been areas of interest in the past and support and resistance levels seem to perfectly fit into the box. With a lot of traders looking at the same support and resistance levels, there is a good chance that a huge number of orders are at those levels. Now, there is no guarantee that price will bounce from these levels, but at least you can be more confident about your trade. See, always remember that trading is all about probabilities. And if you can stick to those higher probability trades, then there is a better chance of you coming out profitable in the long run. Now, the second method is how to use Fibonacci retracement with trend lines. So, Fibonacci retracement levels work best when the market is trending. So, it makes a lot of sense to combine it with trend lines. This is an interesting application of Fibonacci retracement tool which can help us forecast the next swing low in case of an uptrend and the next swing high in case of a downtrend which is expected to be a part of the trend line. Let me explain. For example, the price has been respecting a short term ascending trend line or an uptrend line. So you are planning to take a long entry on the next swing low into the trend line. But before the price even tests the trend line again, what you can do is that you can plot the Fibonacci retracement levels from the previous swing low to the most recent swing high so that you can forecast beforehand as to which level you can expect the price to retrace. Notice how the 50% and 61.8% Fibonacci levels are intersected by the rising trend line. We'll also observe if any of these levels will act like a support level. And guess what? The 61.8% Fibonacci level held and it acted as a support level not just once but twice and the price bounced from it both times. But since we are looking for confluence and high probability setups, we will only take an entry when the price tests the 61.8% level and the trend line. Now this would have been a perfect entry and an even perfect trade. You can adopt this process throughout the entire trend. You can also use this method in case you are eyeing a downward trend. But the only difference is that you will be looking to forecast the swing high instead of a swing low. Now let's look at the third method which is using Fibonacci retracement with candlestick patterns. Now when combining Fibonacci retracement tool with candlestick patterns, we are actually looking for exhaustive candlesticks which can tell you if the buying or selling pressure is exhausted. And it can also give you a clue as to when the price may continue trending or when it is weakening. Now the exhaustive candlesticks that we are interested in are pin bars with or without a real body. Now the long upper or lower wicks represent price rejection and it indicates a potential shift in the momentum and market sentiment. Now take a look at this example where the price moves with strong momentum towards the upside. Then we plot the Fibonacci retracement levels. 
we can notice that the price retraced back to the 23.6 percentage level. At this point, you might have this doubt in mind, since the price has moved up so much, there might not be enough momentum for the price to move upside. And so you might anticipate the price to retrace even lower, or in fact it could even reverse for that matter. But then something interesting happens. The retracement stalls with an exhaustive pinball candle with a very long wick which rejects all the lower prices, indicating that the sellers are weak. Or in other words, the buyers are still dominant. So at this point, you can look to take a long trade when the price starts to move higher. It would earn you some decent returns. You can always improve your odds if you add support and resistance levels into the mix and then you get more confirmations on your trade. Now the last method is to use Fibonacci retracements in conjunction with chart patterns like pennants, flags, wedges, etc. I have already discussed this topic in detail in my chart patterns course. So you can check that video out to know more. But to briefly remind you, chart patterns like flags usually have narrow retracement, usually between 23.6% and 38.2%, while patterns like pennants have much deeper retracements between 38.2% and 50%. Now the trade entry, stop loss and targets will be based on the pattern and not really based on the Fibonacci tool. Now that you have an idea on how to use Fibonacci retracement levels to find confluence setups, the next thing you might have in your mind is when to enter and where to set the stop loss. Well, the context is very straightforward. You could set your stop loss just past the Fibonacci retracement level. Let me explain. So if you are planning to take a long trade at 38.2 percentage Fibonacci level, then you would place your stop loss beyond the 50 percentage level. Or another case, if you feel like the 50 percentage level would hold, or if you take a trade from 50 percentage level, then you would put your stop loss past 61.8 percentage level, and so on and so forth. It's simple, right? So in a similar manner, if you have shorted at 50 percentage level, then you could place your stop loss order just above the 61.8 percentage Fibonacci level. Now the reasoning behind the method of setting stop loss is that you believed that 50% level would hold as a resistance level. Therefore, if the price were to rise beyond this point, your trade idea would be invalidated. Now the problem with this method of setting stop loss is that it is entirely dependent on you having a perfect entry. And setting a stop loss just past the next Fibonacci retracement level assumes that you are actually confident that the support or resistance area will hold. And as pointed out earlier, using drawing tools is not an exact science. So usually this method is good for stop loss placement based on short term and intraday trades. Now if you're planning to trade a support, resistance and Fibonacci confluence setup, then you can take a trade entry when the price starts to resume in the direction of the trend from the area or level of interest. And your stop loss can be either placed beyond the next Fibonacci level as we have mentioned earlier or you can set the stop loss below the support level or above the resistance level with suitable buffer using a volatility indicator like ATR depending on your trade direction. And in case if you have considered an exhaustive pin bar candlestick for your trade then you might be better off taking a trade when the price crosses the pin bar in the direction which you want to trade. So if you are looking to go long then buy when the price breaks above the high of the pin bar candle and set the stop loss below the exhaustion pin bar. Or if you are looking to short, then take a short trade when the price breaks below the low of the pin bar candle and place the stop loss above the high of the pin bar candlestick. Now the same logic applies if you are taking trades from trend lines. In this case, you have to set your stop loss with a suitable buffer with respect to the trend line. Now let's move on to the next topic which is Fibonacci expansions and Fibonacci extensions. Now most of the time, traders get confused as to what is what. Now most of us might not even know both of these exist. And there are some of them who believe that both of them are the same. So let's address all these issues and discuss in detail what both of these Fibonacci tools are and what it does. Both these tools are used by traders to predict how far a trend will go or maybe you can think of these levels as potential targets or exits for traders who have taken a trade 
from any of the retracement levels. I know you have questions. I know you want to know how both of them are different. How can we apply these tools in the charts? Should we include VIX or is it just the body that we should consider? So let me keep things as simple as possible. Since we use Fibonacci retracement tool to time pullbacks and since we want to measure the whole trending move, we start from the origin of an impulse move and that includes the VIX of the candles also. Now it's similar to the Fibonacci extension and expansion tools as well. We require the entire price swing. So we will consider the lowest and highest wicks of the candles also. Now let me start off with the Fibonacci extension level, which is rather the more commonly used Fibonacci tool. To draw the Fibonacci extension levels, we require three points, a swing high, a swing low and a retracement level. Let's start with an uptrend. In an uptrend, the general idea is to take profits on the long trade at a Fibonacci price extension level. First, select the trend-based Fibonacci extension tool from the left side panel if you are using TradingView. As I have mentioned earlier, you can determine the Fibonacci extension levels by using three mouse clicks. First, click on the significant swing low, which is the origin of the move in an uptrend. Then drag your cursor and click on the most recent swing high. Finally, drag your cursor back down and click on any of the retracement levels. Now this will automatically display each of the price extension levels showing both the ratios and their corresponding price levels. And in a downtrend, the general idea is to take profits on a short trade at a Fibonacci extension level since the market often finds support at these levels. And the concept actually remains the same. You need to select the trend-based Fibonacci extension tool from the left side panel and click on the three swing points. So you will have to start with the most significant swing high, which is the origin and then click on it, drag the cursor down, click on the most recent swing low level and then again drag the cursor back up and click on the most significant retracement level. Now the software will automatically plot all the price extension levels and their corresponding ratios. And as you can notice, the major extension levels includes 100%, 127.2%, 161.8%, which is actually the golden ratio and so on. You can always go to the settings and play with it to understand how different levels will look like in the chart. And you can also change the appearance of the levels and so on. Now coming back to our discussion, let's take an example to understand things better. Now this is nifty one day chart. The market is trending up. And we have a swing low, a swing high and a retracement which is perfect for bringing up our Fibonacci extension tool. Now first, select the swing low which is the origin of the move. Then drag the cursor and click on the swing high and then drag the cursor back down and click on the lowest point on the retracement. This will automatically bring up all the Fibonacci extension levels which are none other than possible price levels where the price could face resistance. Or in simple terms, these could be levels where potential selling pressure could come in. This also means that these are good levels for setting up our targets. Now let us see what happened to the price afterwards. In terms of retracement, the price got a good support at 50% retracement level. Then the price started to move higher. The price rallied all the way to 61.8% level, which formed a swing high level. Then it fell back to the 38.2% level where it found support again. The price rallied again and found some resistance at 100% level. A couple of days later, the price rallied again before finding a short resistance at 161.8% level and moved higher to 200% level and finally found some good resistance at 261.8% level. As you can see from the example, 61.8% level, 100% 161.8% and 261.8% levels all would have been good places to take off some profits. Now let's look at an example of a downtrend. Let's take the case of Coforge on our daily time frame. Note that you can use any time frame that you like for analysis and trading using Fibonacci. So if you look at the Coforge retracements, it is clear that we have a shallow retracement between 23.6 and 38.2 percentage level for a while. Now let me bring up the Fibonacci extension tool to mark its potential take profit levels if you intend to short its futures or options. So we'll click on the swing high which is the origin.
then drag the cursor and click on the swing low and then drag the cursor back up to the highest retracement point which is between 23.6 and 38.2 percentage level and click on it. Now all the Fibonacci extension levels are plotted and let's see how the trade would have performed. Now the price found support at 38.2 percentage level, stayed there for a while and even made another sharp retracement before falling lower. Then the 50 percentage level held as initial support, then became an area of interest and as the price moved lower, the 61.8 percentage level also became an area of interest before the price shot down to test the 100 percentage extension level. So if you look at it, you will find that the 100 percentage extension level also acted as a strong support. So in short, we could have taken profits at 38.2 percentage level, 50 percentage, 61.8 percentage levels, and with some patience, even at 100 percentage levels. All these levels acted as support, possibly because other traders were keeping an eye out for these levels for taking profits as well. Now, these examples illustrates that price finds at least some temporary support or resistance at Fibonacci extension levels, but not always, but often enough to correctly adjust your position to take profits and manage your risk. But of course, there are some problems to deal with here. The first one is that there is no way to know which exact Fibonacci extension level will provide a support or resistance. Secondly, there are occasions where some of these levels may or may not act as support or resistance. The price might neglect it and move past it as if it does not even exist. And the problem is determining which swing low to start from in creating the Fibonacci extension level. This usually happens when the price consolidates in a level so much so that multiple highs or lows are created which can actually confuse traders. Again, the point is that there is no one right way to do it. But with a lot of practice, you will make better decisions of picking swing points. You will have to use your discretion in using Fibonacci extension tool. You will have to judge how much longer the trend will or may continue. So if I were to talk about the important levels, from my experience, the best levels to set your targets based on Fibonacci extensions are 61.8 percentage, 100 percentage and 161.8 percentage levels. I'm not saying that other levels are useless or not worth considering, but these three levels gives good results most of the time. You can also use trailing stop losses along with these levels to improve your odds of booking the profit. Trailing stop loss can be as simple as moving averages or an ATR based stop loss like Chandler stops. I've already made videos on setting stop losses and on ATR indicator. You can watch it to know more. Now, we have come to the final topic of our discussion, which is Fibonacci expansions. Expansions are also used for profit taking or for trend forecasting or simply for getting an idea on how far the trend might move. For this scenario, we will use the exact same tool to plot the expansions that we have used to draw the Fibonacci extension levels. But we will only require two points and three clicks to draw the expansions instead of three points and three clicks in case of extension levels. The two points required are simply the swing low and swing high of the impulse move. Now, how to draw the expansion levels? Let's take a look at the process for an uptrend. For an uptrend, we require a swing low and a swing high. The swing low is the origin of the swing. So we will select the trend based Fibonacci tool from the left side panel. Then click on the swing low then drag the cursor and click on the swing high and then drag the cursor all the way back down to the swing low or the origin but make sure to shift this click towards the right for better visibility. Now this will automatically plot all the expansion levels. There is not much of difference in ratios of levels being plotted but what is more important to understand is that Fibonacci extensions are used to project the potential levels up to which the price could move up after a retracement. But when it comes to Fibonacci expansions, we are literally projecting the entire swing that we have considered. That is, we are projecting 100% of the swing that we have considered over and above the swing highs in case of an uptrend. If you ask me, what is the use of doing so? I would say there is not much of a strong use case here. But one thing that I have noticed is that 
we can make use of the golden ratio or 161.8 percentage level more by making use of these expansion levels in comparison to the extension levels because in extension levels 161.8 percentage is a very large price target and it is a common practice to use 61.8 or 100 percentage extension levels for targets as they are easily achievable most of the time but with expansion levels 161.8 percentage is quite easily achievable now let's look at an example for a downtrend also in this case also we will require the swing high and swing low the swing high is the origin or the start point of the bearish impulse swing while the swing low is the end of the impulse swing move so once the start and end points are identified select the trend based fibonacci tool from the left side toolbar then click on the swing high and drag the cursor down click on the swing low and then drag the cursor all the way up to the swing high and place the cursor in line with the swing high level towards the right and click expansion levels will be automatically plotted even in this case levels like 127.2 percentage 161.8 percentage 200 percentage etc will be our potential take profit levels you can always go to the indicator settings and add or remove more ratios you can even change the ratios if you want even though it is not recommended anyways these are the three fibonacci tools that you must know as a trader it doesn't matter if you are an intraday trader, swing trader, or positional trader. These Fibonacci tools work in all type of liquid charts and across all different time frames. You can use these levels to make buy or sell decisions or to set stop loss and take profit levels. However, it is important to note that Fibonacci trading is just one of the many technical analysis methods and it should be used in conjunction with other forms of analysis before making any trading decisions. So keep learning, backtest what you have learned and try to implement what you have learned in your trades and see if it works for you. Now that is all I have for you in this video. I hope the video was useful to you and if it did, please make sure to like and share this video and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and also enable the bell notification so that you won't miss out on any upcoming video uploads. I will see you guys with another video. Till then.